Hey guys, this is Korak from Edureka. Welcome to today's session on AWS CloudTrail. Now, before we get to the topic at hand, let's just go through today's agenda. First, we have why do we need CloudTrail, followed by what is CloudTrail, the features of CloudTrail, the functionality, its limitations. There's a demo on AWS CloudTrail, followed by a comparison between CloudTrail and CloudWatch, which are two different services provided by AWS. And finally, we end it with a case study. Please subscribe to our videos if you like them. And if you're looking for an AWS certification, please check the link in the comments below. So first up, we have why do we need CloudTrail? So in today's world, business agility is the need of the hour. Now, every company wants business agility. Business agility means to achieve certain business goals by a certain period of time which is completely improving your efficiency and it shortens the time you take to complete one job and therefore it is improving the organization's efficiency. Now what CloudTrail does is CloudTrail is essential to simplify operational analysis and troubleshooting. So it is a service which directly contributes to achieving business goals. Next up we have what is CloudTrail. So CloudTrail is basically a service provided by Amazon which enables the governance, compliance, and risk auditing as well as management auditing for the AWS account. So that basically means that it is a service that lets the user monitor user activity and the host activity about whatever is going on in the account. It might even be about API activity, and uh, that is why CloudTrail gives the user a fair overview of what is going on in the account. Now, next we have the features of CloudTrail. Now, apart from the fact that CloudTrail can be used from any part of the world because of Amazon being worldwide. So when we talk about the feature of multi-regional, what we see is not that AWS itself is something which is global, but the fact that CloudTrail as a service allows the user to basically make trails from any part of the world and any number of trails. There is though a certain limitation to the number of trails that somebody can make. But apart from that, there is the choice of making the trails multi-regional, right? Next up, we have event history. Now event history is a tab on the dashboard in the AWS Cloud Trail which basically helps the user see what is going on in CloudTrail and its integrated services, right? So it basically gives an overview of whatever is going on in CloudTrail and its integrated services like S3, like Lambda, like DynamoDB, right? And it basically shows, and it basically is used by the viewer to see if there is some uh, unnatural activity going on in the account as well. The third feature is an optional feature, which is file encryption. Now file encryption is basically done by AWS KMS, which is key management system. So this basically allows the user to encrypt the logs that are created to basically maintain the integrity of those log files. And finally, we have file integrity. Now file integrity is a feature of CloudTrail, which basically checks for file validation. Now it checks if all the files are not corrupt or not. Any form of corruption in any of the log files will destroy the integrity of the file. Now these are the features. Now let's come to the functionality of how CloudTrail is working, right? Now what exactly happens when you switch on, uh, when you go to AWS CloudTrail? So basically you, there is some sort of activity that's going on, right? Suppose you basically log into CloudTrail or you do something, you delete a table with some of its integrated services like DynamoDB. Now, as soon as there is some sort of activity going on, CloudTrail captures these activities and records them as an event, right? And what happens then is these recorded events are then logged and dumped into an S3 bucket, right? What happens further is not just events from CloudTrail are logged and integrated, but as well as its integrated services such as DynamoDB and Lambda are also logged inside CloudTrail and we can view them in event history as well. 
So these are the integrated services that are there with uh, AWS CloudTrail. Uh, first, we have AWS S3, which is Secure Storage Service, which is basically a storage service provided by AWS, which is also an integrated service with CloudTrail. AWS SNS is Simple Notification Service. This is a notification service which is used to basically notify users if there is some unusual activity going on in the account. Then we have DynamoDB. A DynamoDB is an OSQL database which is also integrated with CloudTrail and Lambda is similar to DynamoDB as well. So this is an example of how CloudTrail works in tandem with DynamoDB, right? So the first thing that the user does is the user logs into the AWS console, right? After that, they go to DynamoDB and create a table, right? After that, as soon as the table is created and there are certain inputs inside the table, these activities are simultaneously recorded by CloudTrail because of the fact that DynamoDB is completely integrated with CloudTrail. And this happens automatically. So the logs are stored in event history and then can be viewed later by the user, right? So this I will show you in the demo and you'll get a better understanding of how it works. Now this is the event history tab in CloudTrail along with the exporting of DynamoDB data into an S3 bucket. Now this the second one we don't think we need but it's still something that we can do from DynamoDB. Next up we have the limitations of using CloudTrail. Now CloudTrail has a lot of benefits but there are certain limitations to CloudTrail as well. Like we talked about CloudTrail being multi-regional but the number of trails per region is limited to five, right? The next one is two transactions per second. So two transactions per second can happen. That means two events can happen, work in tandem at the same time, right? That's a limit though. So the third one is event selectors. Event selectors are basically used by the user so that they get to choose which events they want to work with. Now those event selectors are limited to five per trial. And finally, we have the event size, which is limited to 256 kilobytes, right? So up next, we have a demo on AWS CloudTrail. So this is basically your AWS management console. And here we can see basically the recent services that I have visited. So here we go to CloudTrail, right? Let's see what's there. Right, here we go to trails and we have here one, two, three trails that are there. So we have a limitation of five trails per region. So we can still create a trail, right? And of course, here we see that no data is being logged right now because it costs you extra to keep logging data. And this is a free account. So we go to create trail. Now, the first thing that you have to do is Put trail name. Now that can be anything. For example, I can write it as trail x. You can have anything from underscores to add the rate in the names, but now you cannot have a space in between, right? So here you get an option for creating a new S3 bucket where the log data will be stored, or you can use an existing S3 bucket, right? So I choose to use an existing S3 bucket. So here we go. And here we browse for the existing bucket. This is the existing S3 bucket that I choose. So there's an optional feature called prefix. So this is basically log file encrypted. So this is basically log file encryption enabled, right? So this is encrypted. So this is enabled. I can choose to disable it or enable it. So I am enabling it, right? And let's say another key. KMS3 is my alias, right? So log file validation. So validation means log file integrity will continuously be checked, which is enabled. And notification is disabled. I can choose to enable it or disable it. I will choose to disable it. So CloudWatch logs is also an optional feature where it allows the user to basically move the logs into CloudWatch, which is, which is another service provided by AWS as well, right? So tags are completely optional here. 
So next we go to choose events. Now there are three types of events. We have management events, we have data events, and we have insights. Management events are free and can be viewed in the event history tab for 90 days, right? They basically show the user of how the management of the resources that are there present in the AWS account, they take place. So they are called management plane operations. Next, we have data events. Now, data events are not free to the user and cannot be viewed in the event history tab. So they are called data plane operations and give an insight to the user about how the data and the resources are being used in the AWS CloudTrail, right? And insights are basically any form of, uh, let's say, unusual activity that takes place, right? in your account these are recorded as insights so here only management events are enabled i can enable insights or not because management events is the only thing that is free so all of these data events and insight events will incur costs right so here we can both read and write the management events that are there right and we obviously don't want to exclude the kms events because we have enabled kms so next up we see the general details of what our trail is going to be like, right? And then we just go to create trail and we have our trail trail X, right? So let's see if that gets logged. Let's go to dashboard. So this is logging data right now, right? Trail X. And as you can see here, it has already been created. So it basically takes some time to, you know, log data into event history tab right so this just shows what happened when i logged into the aws console it shows me that i have logged into the console so if you wait for a while you will see basically what all you can do so next up we'll see what dynamo db does and how it works in tandem with the cloud trail right so let's just go to dynamo db so this is what DynamoDB looks like, right? Let's go to tables. Now there are some tables that I've already created, right? And we go to orders. Let's see what's there in orders to see what's there in the table. We can go to view items, right? So this is one of the items that is there. So there are certain actions that I can take regarding this particular item so i select this item i choose to let's say delete it and it's deleted so there is some sort of change in the dynamo db table that i've already created right so let's go back to CloudTrail and see if this is working right there we go right here we see a lot of things here we see that it is s3 so basically here we see what exactly is happening which bucket i am using to store the logs here we see that we have created an encryption key for the encryption of the log files as well okay so in a while in five minutes you will see that there is some sort of change in the dynamo db folder as well because it takes time it takes at least five minutes that might be a bit long for you but it takes five minutes to basically to see the changes made inside the cloud trail let's just try one more time right so what we can do here is that we can go to trails and stop logging the data here because what happens here is that you can incur costs if you go on and on so we'll take the safer option and stop logging the data but when you go back here this is what you see now this is some activity that is taking place in dynamo db as well right and this is listed as an insight so it doesn't really know what is going on because there is no data in the table that is there because there's only one item that was there in the table which got deleted so there is some sort of insight so this is basically what cloud trail demo is like next we come to cloud watch versus cloud trail now cloud trail and cloud watch are two services that are provided by amazon now cloud trail is a management tool which is basically used for the governance compliance and risk auditing so basically here you can continuously monitor what is going on in your account and your related 
accounts and integrated services as well so this simplifies the security analysis the resource tracking and as well as troubleshooting right while cloudwatch is basically a monitoring and management service which provides data and actionable insights to monitor your resources so what it does is unlike cloud trail which keeps the requests of all the data in the aws account cloudwatch focuses more on the performance and how to optimize the resources that are already being utilized so it is mostly based on operational help right now next we see the difference between CloudTrail and CloudWatch. Now CloudWatch focuses mainly on monitoring the services and reporting their health and performance. While CloudTrail focuses on creating logs for every event that is there, right? Now in CloudWatch, the user can analyze logs and optimize resources, resources for better performance, right? And in CloudTrail, it is all about compliance support. So all the events are logged and can be viewed by the user to ensure business agility and adhere to certain standards that are there. Now, CloudWatch basically delivers data for one minute, in one minute for detailed monitoring and in five minutes for basic monitoring. While CloudTrail, as I said before, an event is logged into event history every five minutes. These logs are then further transported into the S3 bucket every 15 minutes, right? Now, finally, we come to a case study, which is about Pacific Interlink, which is a Kuala Lumpur based organization. Now, Pacific Interlink is an organization which is a diverse organization, which is basically into trading, refining, shipping, manufacturing, etc. And they want their services from Asia to go to the global market now they use aws to deploy their workforces which is basically using services such as cloudtrail cloudwatch and lambda which has resulted in excellent business agility for them and substantial savings so this is a major plus point for pacific interlink in using aws all the time right so business agility and resource optimization is the need of the hour in today's world so there are cost effective methods for resource utilization in cloud computing, right? Cloud computing is the future and Amazon is the front runner in global cloud services. And with that, I end this video. Thank you very much. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!